So join me in a seated position. Take this big purple, this big knotty underneath us so that when you sit, you have the entire um, leg bones from the outer knees to the outer hips onto the ground. Take an easy twist, gaze over and a shoulder, and just notice as the weight rock and wobble, one side or the other kind of lifting. And do the same thing on the other side. And we'll put a hand down to the floor, lift the other arm up. And as you lift the arm up, whatever arm is lifted, try to stretch it away from the hip, almost as if you could press the opposite hip down and then do the same thing on the other side. So the side that's stretching, we're getting long from the armpit to the hip, reaching the hand away from the knee, the knee away from the hand. And then as you bring both hands down to your knees, Round, tuck your chin to your chest, and then lift up, let the head go back. Now bring breath all the way here up into the throat. And then as you exhale and release, take that ball out of the way. Pause for a moment, eyes are closed. See if you feel a difference in your breath. Can you notice the breath in a different place? Bring your hands to your heart, set your intention for your practice, that mental foundation that will guide you. And then take a deep breath, lift up, look up, reach up. And then exhale, rock on over, hands and knees. Go ahead and meet me in our first down dog, hips up and back. And walk it out, bend and straighten one knee at a time. We're gonna be doing a lot for the lower legs, the feet and uh, the calves here, and it's gonna free up our hips and our hamstrings. So let's come down together and roll. We're gonna have the two purples, Mr. Nice Guy and Little Miss Naughty. So this one, the big one, is gonna be underneath your shin bone. That small one will be behind the knee crease. So we'll come into this, uh, this kneeling position, put that small purple ball right underneath the right knee, and then pull your foot back because you're gonna prepare to put the shin onto this big purple ball like so, and then start to go forward and back. Now, if you feel you don't have enough leverage, if you feel like it's really hard to swish forward and back, it's probably because that back knee is too far back behind you. So instead, slide it underneath you more. And that's gonna, so pick it up and draw it forward, and that's gonna give you more purchase to go into the right side. Okay, now we're imagining that we're gliding over a tabletop, but this is anything but a tabletop, right? These are squishy surfaces on one another, rounded surfaces on one another. So you're gonna feel a little wobble and that's okay. I want you to think about like anytime you feel that um, sort of wobbling around, don't think that I'm not doing it right. In fact, this is exactly what we're supposed to be doing because we're going to be highlighting areas that you would avoid otherwise if we were just doing it on a flat surface. So go ahead and put the top of the foot onto the floor, climb the hands back closer to your knees, and round your spine like a Halloween cat. Feel that stretch on the top of the foot, especially on the big toe side, and then release. When you take this stuff out of the way and you stretch back, see if you can notice a difference in your breath. Is it easier to find your breath here? And then we're gonna start that circling, go around the big toe mound. Both directions as you circle. come into your downward facing dog. So we're gonna keep that right foot down, hands come closer to your left knee. We'll pick up that left leg, we're in a three-legged dog. 
pick up the left foot and then replace that foot onto the floor for your regular down dog. And just notice that difference, right side versus the left side. Come on down, noticing that clarity, almost as if there's more space for you and access for you on the side that we've rolled, okay? So same thing, other side. Left knee has that small ball in the back of the knee. And then we draw the foot back to prepare for the shin to land onto that small, uh, the big purple, okay? And then go forward and back. Now, fists are a great way to keep you um, out of your wrist, right? So if you wanna make a fist and press your knuckles down, and hopefully that encourages you to take some weight into the arms as you go forward, right? So all this stuff, pretty awkward, of course it is. So the point is that instead of kind of avoiding those awkward places, we go to those awkward places and make sure that breath is still with us. Okay, let's climb our hands closer to the knees. Top of the foot down, round your spine like a Halloween cat. You should feel a big stretch in the top of the foot. Imagine getting longer in the big toe side of the foot. And then all this stuff comes out of the way. And once you do that, hold the hamster, or the calf stretch on the left side and just check in. Is it easier to find the breath? And then start your circles. So we make sure that breath is still with us because that's how you know that nervous system is on board. And nervous system affects every other system. There's not a single system that isn't affected by the nervous system. Okay? And then other direction, fascia too. The fascia system is, there's little, you know, you can think about it as branches. There's branches of every other system that connects with that trunk of the fascia, right? So if you think about it that way, it's all connected. Heel pressing back, hands walk a little bit closer to your right knee. We'll pick up the right knee and kick it back. And as you kick it back, weight is in your left heel, stretching in the back of that left calf. Both feet on the floor for your regular down dog. And notice the ability to leverage your, your weight back more, almost as if you have more space to press the legs straighter. And then release to child's pose, knees wide apart, big toes together. Come on down. All right, back to your down dog, but as a transition, because we're gonna end up rolling feet. So walk feet to hands, hands to feet, however it works better for you, and let the head drop. As you let the head drop, remember all that good work we just did for the calves, right? So spread the bones of your toes, push your heels down and apart, and then fan your toes down and apart. You should feel that gets the hips active. And then from there, let the head drape more. Now soften everything as you slowly come up. Once you arrive in this standing position, hands to heart. If you feel lightheaded, drop your chin. Otherwise, just pause for a moment and let the body acclimate. Alrighty, so let's do some fancy footwork here. A little tiny white one here. We're gonna put this underneath the right foot and go forward and back. So remember we started with our calves, right? So we're gonna be getting a really nice calf stretch and we're gonna be kind of getting into these attachments where the foot and ankle attach to the back of the leg. So let's take heel down, toes lift. And once you've done that, we're gonna do a micro bend in both knees. So hands stay on hips, because we're not gonna go side to side, right? We're not gonna wobble the hips. Hands on hips to stay level in the hips. We're gonna do a tiniest bend of the knee. 
both of them. So both knees tiny bend. And then straighten. Let's do that again. Tiny bend. And straighten one more time. A little bit of a bend of the knees. And straight. Now you're going to pick up that foot and we're going to bring it way far back. So what I mean by way far back, I want you to reach from the hip to the top of the foot. Left hand stays on left hip, right? Reach up with that right arm, look up, get longer on your right side. Look up. And then release. Both feet on the floor, pause, take a breath. See if you can notice a difference, the side you rolled versus the side you have not. Okay, let's do it all over again, other side. So we have this small white one, left foot. Just go forward and back. Yeah, you're gonna notice these adjust adjustments, right? as the body tries to deal with the load of gravity on just one leg. Don't try to fight that, right? In, in fact, embrace it in the sense of like, allow yourself to feel all that slight instability, right? And just notice that your body is trying as best as it can to wake up and support you. And then go ahead and take heel down, toes lift. And we're gonna once again do micro bend of the knees. Remember, we're not doing a lateral movement. We're keeping the hands on the hips so that we know where our hips are relative to one another. And then we do that tiny bit of a bend in the knees, very small, and then just straighten it out. Good, let's do it again. A Little bit of a bend. Straighten it out, keep spreading the bones of your toes as you do this, last one. Okay, now let's pick up and go way far back. So how do I know that you're doing this right with both hips? Well, if I see you starting to sway your shoulders and your belly to the side of the room, I know that that means we have to get right into the top of the big toe. So as you reach back, I want you to think about the top of the big toe doing most of the work. Hands on, or hand on the hip that's stabilizing you, other arm lifting. So we're getting longer, we're reaching, we're extending, we're breathing, and we're looking up. And then release. Okay, the stretch after this one, we're gonna cross the feet. So from the standing position, take a breath, and then we're just gonna put one foot in front of the other, cross, and come on down. Touch your chin to your chest, and see if you can notice now from the feet to the calves. Can we get longer there to allow the hamstrings to lengthen? Can you feel this more in your hamstrings? Lean back just a little bit, almost like you're gonna fall backward. And then as you bend the knees, we rise up on cross, take a breath. And then do the same thing other side. Take it across, come on down. And then once again, think about that getting longer in the back of the knees so that the hamstrings get a chance to stretch out. Heavy head, that's the key. Spine dropping heavy. And then come back up nice and slow. Once again, uncross, pause and breathe. And then we move all that stuff around a big sweeping dynamic movement, get loose, across, across. Yeah, remember how I was telling you to avoid shifting going across? Well, here it is, we're doing that cross movement, the whole body getting involved, right? Push off from your feet. Let your calves and your ankles do the work for you here. Reach out and out, go a little faster. Big dynamic movement. Find your breath. Two more. Last set. And then pause. Interlace fingers behind your back. 
deep breath, lift your chest. It should be a little bit easier to lift the front of the hips, let the head go back. And then bend your knees to stuff your nose between the knees, reach your fist over your head, drop your seat low. See if you can feel that stretch in your backside. Maybe you feel it underneath the legs. And then hands down, once again, return to that down dog shape and just notice the difference. Breathe here. Come on down, feet to get, uh, knees wide apart, big toes together, back into your child's pose. Notice the results of your efforts. Okie dokie, come on up. All right, top of the feet onto the floor. So make sure the top of the feet are on the floor. Now notice when you pick up the top of the feet, like when you flex the ankles, you feel your weight forward more. And then when you press the, knee, the top of the feet down, you have the ability to go back more, right? Can you feel that? How when the heels, um, when the ankles are flexed, the weight is forward into the hip flexors and your butt is not doing anything. When you press the top of the feet down, you feel a stretch in the hip flexors and now your glutes have to catch you. See if you can feel that, right? So just go forward and back a little bit. And then as you press straight down into the feet, now we're gonna do the work with the big purple ball. So put that Mr. Nice Guy, the big one, in between the thighs. Hands on hips. Okie doke, top of the feet, press them down. We're gonna hinge at the hips, look down. Then pick up your belly nice and strong. Keep your weight back there toward the heels. Don't press forward yet. Pick up the chest, then press forward. Okay, let's keep going. Hinge at the hips, go back. Lean forward, curl in. Then pick up the hips. Right, and then let the chest lift up first and then finish the movement with the thighs going forward. Got it? Let's keep going. It's totally fine if you don't got it yet, okay? Point is that you're just doing the movements and eventually you'll figure it out. We're gonna really squeeze under to lift you up. Okay, let's keep going. So we're gonna find that stuff right at the attachments where the hips and the legs come together. Lift yourself up. Yep, you got it. Keep going. Back and down. Squeeze. Feel the lift. Press down in the front of the legs, the shin bones, to lift you up. That's really the key. As long as you're getting that, you're doing it. One more time. Go back. Press strongly, top of the feet, shin bones straight down, picking you up. Ball out of the way, down dog, but with feet together. So big toes touching, downward facing dog. Let the neck release. We're gonna step wide here into a squat. So look at your hands, step wide, and then drop down into your squat. Take that big ball out of the way if you haven't already. You drop into your heels, press your knees apart. Now I want you to reach down with your first two fingers, wrap them around your big toes. Yep. And then straighten your elbows completely. Lift your chest. Straighten your elbows completely. Pick up your chest. Crown of the head. Imagine crown of the head lifting you up. Yep. Stretch your spine up. Two. One, both hands down, heels go apart. It's a shake and shimmy. Fast, bend and straighten the knees. Reach around, grab your right calf, and just dive over that leg. Other side, too. And then bend the knees. We're gonna go back to that down dog. We're gonna do a different move though. So right leg's gonna lift, 
Bend your knee, kick heel to seat. Let the leg drape. Keep shining that kneecap up to the ceiling. Stretch your left heel down to the floor. Remember all that good work we did from the bottom of the foot to the back of the calf, getting that stretch in the hamstring all the way up into the hip. Release to the other side. Pick it up, hold that stretch. You're gonna feel the load more into the shoulders, right? We're trying to create space. So really pick up the left knee, really lift it. Yes. Come on down, puppy pose. Knees underneath hips, arms go straight, dip your chest down. Come on up. We get to roll hips. So on your back, little knotty, right glute. So we'll put this underneath our seat. Once we come down to the floor, pick up your hips, put the ball underneath your right butt, let the knee flop open, start circling, right? If you're not sure what circling means, put your hands on your hips and go around in a circle. So you should feel both sides of the pelvis doing opposite things. So when one side of the pelvis lowers, the other side lifts and vice versa. Good. A big swish. Let's go other direction. So let's see if you can imagine the tailbone Right, really lifting to the ceiling and then really dropping to the floor. So kind of sweep it around in that circle. It should feel like it's actually circling. All right, left leg straight, right knee crossing over. Now you can keep the right knee uh, bent or you can straighten the right leg. Either way is great. The whole point here is that you've rolled away from the ball and now you're stretching through the backside. So you can keep the knee bent or straight. Either way is fine. Look over your right shoulder. And just breathe here. Should feel like a really nice clearing stretch. And then release, ball out of the way, settle for a moment. Take a breath, notice the difference, right side versus left. And then we get to go right to the other side. So same thing, that small little purple ball will be underneath your left glute, little Miss Naughty. And we're gonna put that left ankle onto the right knee and start your circles. Hands at both hips so you can actually feel the circling happening or you could feel the lack thereof, right? You're just going to start to notice the availability. So we're trying to move that hip in this three-dimensional way, right? So it's not just a forward, back, left, and right. It's a circle. And then other direction too. And then we'll draw that left leg across, right leg straight-ish. You can keep it bent or you can straighten it out. Either way, left arm goes left. Think about the underside of the leg as it relates to the back side of that left hip. Feel that stuff lengthening. Letting the belly be soft. That's when the rotation occurs. That's when there's good 
stuff happening into your spine, that softening of the belly. And then unwind and release once again onto your back. Pause and just breathe. See if you can notice that feeling of being more clear. And then we'll put this whole thing together so that it's in a much more about the whole spine. So access for the lower body so that we get stronger, right? So bend your knees, feet onto the floor. We're gonna lift up the hips. And then when you lower down, we're gonna shoot the legs and arms out. Feel that connection of abdominals to legs. And then draw in, curl up. Make sure you're doing this with breath. So inhale as hips lift. Exhale, bring your hips back down. Inhale, extend the arms and legs. And exhale, curl in. Keep going. Two more sets. Once you've finished, make sure you hold the knees for a moment. Let the head come to the floor, back of the shoulders heavy. And just breathe into your back, the length of your spine. Release the legs and extend them out, pointing the toes, stretch the arms up. Now feel the front of the spine stretch out. Can you feel the belly stretching out? Muscles in the front. And then at your own pace, come over to the side and up to a seat. Notice that access that you have in your core to lift and extend the collarbones. Bring your hands at your heart. Send your body a message of gratitude. Bow to the beauty and divinity within you. Namaste. All right.